<laughs> All right, thank you everybody for coming. It's a pleasure to be with you. My name is Jeff Reber. I'm a uh, professor of psychology and uh, counselor, therapist. And uh, I'm so pleased to be with you to talk about the importance of relationships. Now I need um, a couple volunteers again, if you don't mind, you too, if you don't mind coming up. <laughs> so all you have to do, hold this, hold that, and uh, describe for the audience the qualities that those, this, these objects have. So this is a Phillips head screw with a damaged screw interface. The thread pitch is off and burred and damaged. Mm. Looks like it's been pulled from some dry board and the head is twisted. So it could still work, but it would be a pain to get in yeah. and or to get out mm. afterward. Very good, very thorough, my goodness. How about you, what properties do you notice this has? Well, this is almost the opposite. It is a, looks like a new mm. and perfectly ready to use screw. It has, a, um, yeah, everything looks like it's undamaged and ready for yeah. screwdriver. Are these things, are they shiny? Are they heavy? They're kind of shiny, light, mm -hmm. metallic. Pointy? So it's somewhat shiny, but it's, it's matte on most of the body where it's been used. It's still a little bit shiny on the mm -hmm. top. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of a point. It's damaged. So yes, shiny, pointy, uh, and multi, well, with interesting geometry. So yeah. you can feel it's got texture. Mm -hmm. Would you say that either of these objects has the property of stickiness? Is it sticky? No. No? No. No. Okay. Now let me see yours. All right, let me see yours. I want to make sure we get this right. What do you notice? Has the property of stickiness. How does this have the property of stickiness? Magnetism. Because it's in relation to something else. Yes. The relation this has to the magnet gives it a new property it didn't have before. Correct. Is that right? Yep. And that property is stickiness. It didn't exist when you looked at this by itself. But in relation to this magnet, it now has a new property, stickiness. Or attraction. Or tra attraction, yeah, okay. Really yeah, sticky's probably a, not yeah. the right word. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, good volunteers. Now, just as those screws take on new properties in relation to the magnet, we take on properties we would not otherwise have in relation to other people. And so when we get put into one of those contexts of bubbles we talked about before, things change. We can change. We can become someone other than we expected or knew. Now, I'm 46 years old, and every time I go home to see my parents, I transform. You know what I'm talking about. I come home to my house, and I don't knock on the door. I open the door. Now, I'll have my family with me. I have four children and my wife. They're all there with me. And I will come in, and I immediately become little Jeffy. I don't mean to become little Jeffy. I'm not trying to become little Jeffy, but when I'm in relationship to my mother, I'm a different person in some ways than I am when I'm in relationship to my wife and my kids. So here's how it typically goes. I walk into the room and my mom is ecstatic. Jeffy's here, little Jeffy's here. There's clapping, there's rhyming. Jeffy Peffy gets said a lot because my name doesn't rhyme with enough words. So there's Jeffy Peffy, he's here, I'm so excited. And then my mom, almost without fail, will say immediately, Jeffy, Jeffy, what, what would you like to eat? What would you like to eat tonight? Loves to feed me. So I'm like, um, oh, okay. So she sits me down at a, at a table. I sit in the chair. And she says, what do you want? And I mean, my mom has some skills. I can say anything I want, and she'll make it somehow. I want uh, a burrito. I want a hamburger. I want a chocolate shake, for sure. Um, you know, maybe some chips and dip and, you know, I'll just say stuff. And off she runs into the kitchen. Now, when she runs off into the kitchen, and I'm sitting there with my fork and my knife waiting, what do you think my wife and my kids are doing? Staring at you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who is little Jeffy? What are you doing sitting at the table? Your mom's 79 years old. Why are you making her go into the kitchen and find food for you? You can make yourself. What are you doing? And they're just like... And of course, I'm like, shut up. Don't ruin it. This is really cool. Come, come sit and watch my mom disappear into the kitchen and come out with whatever you've asked for. 
Why would you complain? This is all wonderful. See, in their minds, little Jeffy is not the Jeff that they want to be with. The Jeff they know is supposed to be quite different than little Jeffy. But I change. And you think about it. Do you? Do you become little Brandy? <laughs> no matter how old your parents might get, you go to visit them, things change. When I'm with my kids, I'm not the same as I am when I'm with my students. And I'm not the same with my students than I am with my friends growing up. My whole language changes when I'm with my friends. I say dude a lot with my friends. I never say dude to my professor colleagues. I don't think I've said it once. So our language changes, our demeanor changes, we become little children with our parents, all because we take on properties that have to do with who we're with as much as they might have to do with something about about us, if not more. So who we are has everything to do with who we're with. Not only that, who we're with will allow us to access emotions and thoughts and behaviors we would not otherwise be capable of. So let me give you an example. My son, when he turned 16, my oldest son, got his driver's license. And we, of course, sat down with him and said, there are some rules. I know there's the law rules, but then there's the family rules too. And the rules go like this. You may not drive at night in the dark because you're just learning and we don't want you to be doing that. You may not drive anyone with you in the car. So you can go to a friend's house and come back, but you can't take anyone with you. Not until we say it's okay. Just at first. Okay? Can't do that. You need to go straight to where you're going and come straight home. No side tours, no detour. You come straight back. Okay? So the first weekend comes after he gets his license, and he says, Dad, I'd like to drive to my friend's house. And we say, okay, son, that's okay. Remember the rules. You go straight there, you come back, you don't drive at night, and you don't drive anybody. About 10.30 at night, I get a phone call. When you get this phone call, it's not your favorite phone call to get. And when your son, after you pick up the phone, says, hi, Dad, how are you? You know it's bad, because my son never asked me how I'm doing. And so I pick up the phone, hey, Dad, how are you? And I'm like, what is it, son? Um, well, uh, I took the van. So it was our, we only had a van for him to take, which was a bad idea. I took the van, and all my friends wanted to go to this other house. And so I put all my friends in the van, which was six other kids. And when we were driving to this other place, I'd never been there before, so I didn't know where I was going. And so I was driving along, and all of a sudden, the, someone yelled out, turn. And so I just turned. And next thing I know, Dad, there wasn't a road where I was turning. There was a ditch, and I was on the side of the ditch, and the car was almost rolling into the ditch. But there was this like pole that kept the car from rolling into the ditch, which of course means the pole scraped the whole side of the car. And then, Dad, I felt this really big bump. And it turns out I had driven over some, a railroad track. And my front tire got over the front track. And then the car just died. Oh, and by the way, I hear a train whistle. That's the call I got. Now, because of the gift of my relationship to my son, I was enabled to access a level of rage that is not cap I'm not capable of achieving by myself. My son gave me the transcendent gift of rage to a level that's like Hulk level, OK? <laughs> What a gift my son gave me. We traveled uh, to the railroad tracks immediately. Luckily, someone who had a, a winch had pulled the van off of the railroad track and, uh, before the train did come by, so it would have been bad. And we saw the carnage, the damage to the van. We saw the kids scared. We saw the police had shown up. And I was just ready to go and lay into my son and just let him have it. And I didn't care who was there. I didn't care if his friends were gonna, you know, he's gonna be embarrassed in front of his friends. I had it all ready. I had readied my rage talk. And I looked at this little kid's face and I realized he's already beat himself up more than I ever could. He feels awful. He feels terrible. <laughs> he is broken and embarrassed and ashamed and really sorry. I could see it all on his face. And he helped me access a level of empathy I didn't know before. Our children, our spouses, our friends take us places we would never 
be able to go ourselves. We might not even ever want to go ourselves. I don't always want to be little Jeffy. You know, when I'm with my mom hanging out and I'm walking out the door to go to work and she's like, you know, Jeff, you'd be a lot happier if you shaved. I don't want to be that little Jeffy anymore. Mom, I'm 46 years old. I can do what I want with my face, you know. But my mom, my son, they've taken me places I couldn't otherwise go, given me access to personality traits, emotions, and thoughts I couldn't otherwise have. Some we don't like. I'm not saying they're all positive. I work with people who've been abused, neglected. Their parents have left marks on their personality that will last a lifetime. But relationships cannot be ignored. They change us. They affect us. They give us traits and qualities. And those traits and qualities sometimes only show up with those people. So I am very different with my wife than with my children, than with my colleagues, than with my friends from growing up. And if we're going to understand people at a deep level and we're going to treat people around their disorders and the relational dynamics that are causing them distress and to be unhealthy, we've got to attend to the ways we are affected by each other like that screw becomes sticky because it's in relationship to the magnet. Little Jeffy, yes. <laughs>